sifting through the internet and the phone calls that came in to a radio station in Green Bay, Wisconsin last night, I think it's very fair to, let's just say, partake in Vikings joy over Packer agony. I think it'd be wrong not to. Go Pack! Go! Defense that came in highly ranked in almost every category in the top 10 in the NFL and was just gashed tonight. Just gashed tonight. And and, and now Over. the uh, Philadelphia Eagles have now intercepted Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and uh, he threw into double coverage, and this game is now over. And no flags down, no pass interference. Look at that. He threw into double coverage, and the backside man is wide open. Go, Pat, go! Can you play that highlight again? The highlight of the final call. Because while Bill Michaels, who's hosting the, the Packers Vent Line show, yeah. My favorite part of that is you hear the reaction from the, the people in whatever establishment he's hosting that show in yeah. before he says that. You hear his co host just go over. Okay, hold on. Defense that came in highly ranked in almost every category in the top ten in the NFL and was just gashed tonight. Just gashed tonight. And, and right and there. Now over. The uh, Philadelphia. Out of the shotgun, Jones on the left side of Rodgers, snap to A-Rod. Throws the slant right side, it's oh, yeah. off the hands and intercepted. Me. Down the left sidelines on the interception is Brigham. And Philadelphia has the football out across the 20-yard line. Go, Pat, go! And Luke says, first and goal and you can't punch it in the end zone. Missed opportunities. Offensive line is completely overrated. Defensive front, not very good. This one's from E in Kentucky, who says, as a Packers fan, I'm embarrassed tonight because our offensive line got manhandled. Uh, Aaron Krause says, can we stop calling David Bakhtiari and the offensive line some of the best in football because they're not? They just had their asses handed to them. Matthew <laughs> said, not happy about the defense. What happened to Petten? Did he get fired? And all of a sudden, they brought back Dom Capers. Here we go. Uh, Klondike uh, says, uh, not happy about this one. Too many goofy plays from Matt LaFleur. Does he know what the hell he's doing? Sure, the first 30 are scripted, and he can be great. Beyond that, Matt LaFleur looked like a rookie head coach and a deer in the headlights. He's trash. So there's some of your reaction tonight, Gary. Go, Pat, go! Out of the shotgun, Jones on the left side of Rodgers. Snap to A-Rod. Throws the slant right side. Oh, it's a no, it off the hands and intercepted. <laughs> Down the left sidelines on the interception is Brigham. And Philadelphia has the football out across the 20 yard line. Go, Pat, go! I know why Gary don't feel good, and I think it's for the same reason as I don't feel well about this, is because, you know, you could, everybody could have a bad game, but we just got manhandled on both sides of the ball, right in the trenches. We could not run the ball. And then, obviously, we couldn't stop, we couldn't stop them. It was embarrassing. And, and I know, yeah, it's new players, but, I mean, come on, it's man against man. And you just got manhandled and got beat up. And I look at this team, like, who are we? I don't even, are we a 6-10 and 8-18? And and it's like. Go, Pat, go! Tell me your morning just didn't improve. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> That was fantastic. My morning was already great because I got to cut all that stuff and put it together. And you probably heard more. Oh, there was more. Oh, there, we, no, no, we, we, we got we won't oh, wait, the wait, surface, wait, Danny. Wait. Did you say more? <laughs> go, Pat, go. The first, the first play of the last drive when Arizona, uh, Aaron Jones had got it down to the three. I thought they should have ran it again. Uh, but that's your rookie head coach. Um. <laughs> You know, man, this this is a gut wrench of loss. This is the type of losses that changes and tilt the field in the playoffs. Now, yep. you know, you look up, we might have to go to L.A. now. You look up, we might have to go to Dallas again. Or, or let alone to come to Philadelphia. Now, I'm still confident in this team as the year go, but you you don't. We've seen this time and time again with this team. Opportunities lost. Then we got to travel to somewhere like San Francisco or L.A. in the playoffs, and we come up short there. This is this is that's what my concern is. Go, Pat, go! Out of the shotgun, Jones on the left side of Rogers, snap to A-Rod. Throws the slant right side, it's a it off the hands and intercepted. Oh, no. Oh, no. You have to be kidding me. 
and Philadelphia has the football out across the 20 yard line. Go, Pat, go! The dagger. That's what it was. Sorry, Wayne. That was the dagger. <laughs> You got to be kidding me. Nothing will ever beat though when Bill Michaels called Aaron Rodgers a one hundred and fifty eight oh. million dollar paperweight. Can we find it? Do we still have that? Oh no. Uh, it's I, I can do some digging. We found yeah. it a couple we uh Phil found it a couple in fact, hold on a second. Mackie found it last week. Okay. Yeah, no, no, it's still around. It, it is the greatest. That is the yeah. greatest Gary, soundbite ever. Don't do it, Bill. Gary, don't, no <laughs> don't Bill, do it, no Bill. Bill. No Bill. Don't, don't do it, Bill. No Bill. Don't do it. No Bill. Don't do that, Bill. No. <laughs> He is a paperweight. I'll oh, see if I can find it. Uh, hold on a second. That is that is one of the best sound bites in the history of radio. Well, what made it so great too is it's at the beginning <laughs> of the show because you yeah. can still hear like the bumper into the show still yes. playing underneath, and it's just like Bill Michaels just came in with the gloves off already. How we <laughs> looking, <laughs> Wisconsin? How we looking? All right, ask and you shall receive. Oh, baby. hurt him again yeah. and then also Aaron Rodgers and his obstinance and stubbornness not to throw the damn check downs time and again throughout this game cost them the game and cost them the season a hundred and seventy no, million no. dollar paperweight no, stop, it's not Bill. worth it stop Bill. come on man no no come on no Bill. come on no. bring it back no bring it back bring it back <laughs> go Pat go so that was them actually closing out an hour because that's Bill's bumper out music is enter Sandman that's is what it? it was. That's okay. that was the final thought of an hour. Was him calling it? I thought it was the beginning. A one hundred and seventy-eight million dollar paperweight was how you ended an hour. That's fantastic. You know what that leads that leads me to this question for Vikings fans. Yeah. Obviously, if you're a Vikings fan, you would like to see them go into Soldier Field on Sunday and win. And I completely get that. Mm -hmm. Makes perfect sense. But I would ask you this: six five one six four six eight two five five. Our show, of course, is Viking Vent Line. You can tweet at Real D Cunningham. I'm at Jay Zolgad at Score North. If the Vikings don't win, let's just say they just lose an ordinary game, 17-14. So it's not a disaster. They just lost. Right now, as we speak, is your weekend made by what transpired at Lambeau Field last night? Is your weekend already made by what happened at Lambeau Field last night? I know why Gary don't feel good, and I think it's for the same reason as I don't feel well about this. Is because, you know, you could everybody could have a bad game, but we just got manhandled on both sides of the ball, right in the trenches. We could not run the ball, and then obviously we couldn't stop. We couldn't stop them. It was embarrassing, and and I know, yeah, it's new players, but I mean, come on, it's man against man, and you just got manhandled and got beat up and. I look at this team like who are we? I don't need are we a, are we a six and ten and eight and eight team? It's like Go, Pat, go. Is your weekend made? Is your weekend already complete because of the fact and, and by the way, too, we are talking about a monumental meltdown where you were down by seven. You had the ball um what in fact i printed out right at here at the one at the one yard line mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter because there, there was a, a defensive one. pass interference there, right it was indeed exactly right yep you ran you ran four plays from the one all of them featured a future hall of fame quarterback passing the ball all of them were incompletions and, and i heard uh this morning that that is the first time in 40 years that a quarterback has had four as many as four incompletions in a game from the one yard line. And they all came consecutively. Man, it's like is your weekend made? It's like Freddie Kitchens was calling plays for the Packers last <laughs> night. Do we have to accept the fact that Matt LaFleur just might not be very good at this already? I'm not going to be the I guy mean, that says new, that four but... games in. Like we've seen that he can Poor. script play plays really well because right. again, last night, the Packers opened up the game offensively on fire. They were great as long as that script lasted and maybe he extended the script to like 30 plays. Because they were awesome. Devontae Adams in the first half looked like one of the best receivers in football. They looked fantastic. But, again, once you got off that script, it was, okay, this doesn't look very good. This Aaron Rodgers doesn't look like the Aaron Rodgers that we've known for so many years. And maybe Matt, Lef I, Matt LaFleur certainly has some things to work on. There's no question about this that. Deer in the headlights, Danny. He's trash. <laughs> I'm not ready to go there and call him trash. 
How do you not have Aaron Rodgers attempt to flare the ball over the goal line? I mean, all you have to do, yeah. un unlike with Case on Monday, okay, if you flare the ball out and it, you're at midfield and it gets punched out, that's what we like to call a fumble in football. Yeah. But if you're at the one yard line and you're the quarter, I mean, Tom Brady, who has no speed whatsoever and really is not very strong, does it all the time. Mm -hmm. How do you not just call on second down and say, okay, now they're expecting a pass? So let's just have Aaron basically fall forward with the football, and the second that ball touches the goal line, that's a touchdown play dead. Or you know what? You are one of the few teams in the NFL that still employs and regularly uses the fullback, and you are in the state of Wisconsin. Hand the ball to him once. That's fine. Mm -hmm. The state of Wisconsin loves nothing more than a good fullback dive. But you gave the Vikings a gift last night. Yeah. You, you gave, gave the, the rest of the NFC North a sure gift. Sure you did. Yeah. Not just the Vikings. The Lions yep. are happy. If if you're doing a show in Detroit this morning, you're happy about it. Chicago's happy about it. Everyone else in this division is happy about what happened last night, except for Packers fans and Bill Michaels. The Lions are in first place, by the way. For now. They're, they're going to yeah, lose. They're, the they're, they'll, they'll, lose they'll lose Sunday, but that is. You know what? Fun. I don't care. I'm still upset about that. How, how the <laughs> hell is Matt Patricia in first place? Give it time. Give it three days. I'm not, patient, okay. I'm not patient man. <laughs> Give it time. I've never had patience. But Matt LaFleur might be that what in watching that game last night, that was some very questionable play calling. And was that was bad. some very weird. I just I don't understand how you run four plays starting with first and goal from the one yard line when, of your opponent and you've got and, and all you've got is pass, 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 pass. And time wasn't an issue. No, this was Ooh. early in the fourth quarter. Yep. Well, no, nope. that was late in the game. That was the final series. Um, but they they but did have then, the they did have the one where no. they they went four and out though. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no like even the the last the last drive when oh yeah, yeah. yeah. but I'm talking it. about run the ball there too. Mm -hmm. I'm t talking about starting. You are first and goal at the Eagles one with nine nineteen left yeah. in the yeah. fourth quarter. I'm talking about that series. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's let's just get that one right. They, well, the, if you're the, the Packers, the, but I mean, if you're the Vikings, you're like okay, great. The play being competent. The play call that drove me kind of crazy seeing was the the RPO, the obvious RPO that they called where Jimmy Graham and Aaron oh, Rodgers yeah. were just not on the same page. And, and he ended up just floating, which was the right decision because Graham was covered and he didn't want to lose yards. But how do you run something like that right there and, and have it not work? And Jimmy Graham, by the way, and I know he had a touchdown last night, but he is done. Yeah, he's not the same guy. Yeah, he's he cooked. is so done. But he was cooked last year, too. Yeah. He's been cooked for two years now. And oh, I have no God. idea why... Why he's old? he doesn't. Yeah, no, no. I, but I have no clue as to why it, why the league does not say, Jimmy, you're done. No, I get why he keeps playing. He's trying to cash checks. But he, this was a guy who in his prime was a hell of a player. He's one of the best tight ends. Great player. Mm -hmm. But he is so, so cooked. And and in fact, let's get to uh, Matt LaFleur on officiating last night because this does concern me. What did you think of both of yours and Doug's uh, pass interference challenges, and what did you think of the final play? Should there have been at least a review of that? Yeah, I, I really don't know what pass interference is anymore, so I'll just leave it at that. I'll tell you guys this right now. I watched that game last night, and I am now afraid. I become afraid to watch Sunday's Vikings game. Not based on the fact that the Bears might kill him. Not based on, on the fact that the Vikings might kill Mitch Trubisky. It's based on this. Matt LaFleur is right. I have no idea what's a penalty now. Yeah. Uh, there can There is not a play, and I'm not just talking last night, so that this goes well beyond the Packers. So if you're a Vikings fan dancing on the Packers grave on this, keep in mind, there but for the grace of God goes you. Yeah. I, I have no clue what's going to be called now. I have no clue. Every big play, every big play, every significant, oh, wow, that's a really cool play. The first thing you now think is, I wonder if there's a penalty flag. And ordinarily, there is. There are three examples from last night, but there are far more just as far as plays went where you don't know, where basically you say to yourself, there's a very good chance that the players who play this game are not going to impact that play because the officials are going to. Yeah, and I'm on the same page with Matt LaFleur here. I don't know what pass interference is these days either. There were, I forget how many challenges. The one got overturned from the booth, as we talked about during cluster fun on the, the touchdown that the Eagles scored. Yep. There was the one where the Packers defense back looked like he pretty clearly got there early. I was surprised that one wasn't overturned. And I just, I have no... I have no grasp on how this is going to be called. And I realize that now that was the first game of week four. So it technically still is early, but I'd like a little more clarity. I'd like for if... If Matt LaFleur is on the same page as us with this, that's a really bad sign. 
if the coaches don't know what it's what the right call is going to be or what it's supposed to be or how it's going to be called, that's not a good thing. I just don't understand. And I've got the three most egregious examples of calls or non-calls last night. Second quarter. All right. The Eagles are awarded a touchdown on a play that should have been a touchdown. I did not misspeak there but wasn't because of a flag that was then picked up, but the flag was picked up in New York. So it it was called an OPI. Yeah. Basically it was the Dalvin cook rule in reverse though, because instead of, instead of the flag being thrown in the replay center in New York, the flag was thrown on the field. Okay. I didn't agree with that call, but then the people in New York reviewed it, said, pick up the earth's flag. It's not. And so then it's a touchdown. Now, if that is a touchdown, Danny Cunningham, then how in the hell did they throw the Dalvin Cook flag to negate a touchdown in week two when the Vikings play the Packers on the same field? The only potential explanation I might have is that the Zach Ertz thing that was originally called had zero impact at all on the touchdown. It had no impact whatsoever on the play. Maybe that's what they're thinking was. But other than that, I don't have a good explanation for you. Maybe they felt... Maybe they Help felt me, though. how far away Zach Ertz was from the rest of the action that it didn't impact the play at all. It was an egregious call. Maybe that's that is legitimately the only explanation I can have for that. It's just it's maddening though because you have no again. Yeah. This goes back to what's a penalty and who's going to pick up the flag and why was the flag thrown? Because your explanation just now makes sense and I get it completely. But then you've got them in New York telling them to pick up a flag when they initiated the flag on the cook play and yes in all cases plays near the goal line i get that there's going to be there's going to be rubs and there's going to be picks they just happen but how are are we going to look through this for this through the super bowl like are we going to be watching i have no idea i don't have an answer for that and we we could be we might we could I i sure hope not you could be watching the nfc title game again and you could think to yourself that team has a touchdown and then a guy in New York could say no, or the flag could be thrown. All right, example two, third quarter. This one, this one was, was I think this one led to this comment from Matt LaFleur. What did you think of both of yours and Doug's uh, pass interference challenges, and what did you think of the final play? Should there have been at least a review of that? Yeah, I, I really don't know what pass interference is anymore, so I'll just leave it at that. Third quarter, the challenge was this. Matt LaFleur throws his challenge flag to challenge no um, no defensive pass interference on Avante Maddox. Um, and the league said there was no clear and obvious evidence on that play on a pass that was thrown to Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Go back and look at that play. It's all over Twitter. Yeah. Um, Maddox turns around, basically grabs Valdez-Scantling, as he's in the act of trying to get the ball, this this is I think this is as close to the reason why this rule was put into place. Egregious. This was egregious. Like this was not. Oh man, that's close play. This was I'm going to prohibit you from catching the ball. Yeah. And Lafleur, I think, correctly challenged it. And and again, I don't care. It's the Packers. If this was the Vikings, if this was the Bears, this was a I think a quality challenge. Yeah. And yet. As I told you, they said that there was no clear and obvious evidence to substantiate throwing the flag. So if there's not there, then why is the rule there? I think that there they didn't call it because officials are worried about showing up other officials. <laughs> I legitimately think that's part of the reason. I'm not laughing at and you. I'm laughing at what you just said because, I, yeah, and you, you might be right. In some of these cases, that's why I think maybe it's easier to – throw a a flag on something that wasn't as notable. It wasn't necessarily as egregious because no one noticed it the first time. It wasn't that big of a deal. Like, or picking up the flag on the touchdowns. Like, oh yeah, you threw the flag, but you know what? It probably wasn't the right call. Not necessary. We're going to pick that one up because it was just far away from the play. We don't want the official to be, oh, you prevented the touchdown. We're going to give them the Right, but on this one, but on this one, they didn't. I I know. Yeah, so. But I don't think they want to be like, no, you missed that. That should have been a flag. I don't think that they want to go back on. Then why is the rule there? I don't have a good answer for that. That was as, I I honestly believe that was as close to egregious as you can get. And I'm I'm the one who said it has to be. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. All right. The last one. This one I particularly love. So. Valdez Scandling was the intended target on the last Packers play. In fact, it was this play. 
Out of the shotgun, Jones on the left side of Rogers. Snap to A-Rod. Throws the slant right side. Oh, it's a no, it off the hands and intercepted. Me. Down the left sidelines on the interception is Brigham. And Philadelphia has the football out across the 20-yard line. It's Rodgers' pass tipped and intercepted. And then, as you heard Larravee describe, um, returned. But the play originated with the Packer receiver being essentially grabbed and held. Here is what the rule book states. Okay, so the justification, because that's a that is a turnover in that case, they go back and review that automatically. So there needs to be no like Lafleur challenge. Flag well, and it was inside two minutes, so it exactly, been, it so would have been right. initiated from the booth anyway. Exactly. The rule book states, acts that do not occur more than one yard beyond the line of scrimmage are not pass interference. All right, I get that, but can you hold? Like you can't grab. I don't care where it happens. You, the, there is no. I can bump you. They're not going to call. They're not going to call grabbing in that close. So, but then if you're not going to call that one, all right. So if you're going to let that go, why the hell are you throwing all of these first half flags then? Which they did. Like where? What are you doing? They don't have a clue. Just as if we don't have a clue, they don't have a clue either, John. How can you not have a? But how can you have no idea? You you have now, as far as I'm concerned, made this all far worse. Yeah, and I don't know if you're going to stop it's throwing been a rough watch. Yeah, it's awful. And it's it I have to hope it gets better because this isn't enjoyable football. Well, and the problem too is if you like a team. If you're a Vikings fan today and I get the fact the Packers lost and so you're you're uh happy about that. But if you're a Vikings fan today, are you not afraid that Sunday's game is going to be bleeped up? I think you should be afraid about that for any game no matter what what team you root for. That's the way the NFL looks right now. But there's a chance the Vikings could come out and play an ugly, but yet, in their minds, perfect game on Sunday. Yeah. And get totally hosed. Mm-hmm. Could happen. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you don't know the rules, and there's no interpretation of the rules. <sighs> it's just, it's maddening to watch, because all I want to do is sit down and watch a game that's actually decided by the majority of the people who are actually playing the game, mm-hmm. and not the officiating.